It's super easy to forget that Kuhn from Tower of God is actually really strong and has a wide plethora of skills and abilities. A couple weeks ago, I broke down Bomb's skills and abilities, but more so on the transformation side of things, a list of transformations and power-ups that he has received. But today, I'm gonna break down exactly what makes Kuhn such a beast, such a powerhouse, because he has a lot going for him. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe because we upload every single day here on the channel, mostly Tower of God content, but also Webtoon content, and other fun stuff. And like this video if you want more videos just like this. I love talking about it. So right off the bat, Kuhn is just a skilled fighter. You know, aside from just powers or abilities, Kuhn physically is a monster. We first really see this during season one, during the crown game, when in a second, he dashes to the chair before anyone else can get there, leaving behind like a gust of wind and everybody is stunned. Even some of the faster regulars there, like Chung Chung, little squirrel looking regular, was like, what on earth? Like, how can we compete with that, you know? And that's because it's from the 10 great families. And if you're from the 10 great families, typically that means you've got a strong body, you know, a strong affinity to Shinsu and whatnot. He, he's a beast just right off the bat not even counting his abilities and other stuff. We can also see this in some other examples. For example, Chong Blow Road is one of the strongest E-class regulars during the pre-workshop slash workshop battle stuff. And Kuhn, it's implied that Kuhn is the one who scarred his eye, cut out his eye, whatever, right? Which means he had to take down Chong or at least trick him. So by defeating Chong or, or however he did that, that proves that Kuhn is kind of a beast. You know, just because he's a light bear, it doesn't mean that he couldn't be another position or a skilled fighter, which actually leads me to, to my next point. Kuhn is actually a very skilled spear bear. This is seen a couple of times. We see it during the hidden floor. He has a conversation with Kuhn Edwan about it, the data of Kuhn Edwan. Kuhn, if he wanted to, could be a very talented spear bear. And we'll get, we'll, get, we'll get into the ice spears later on, but that says something, you know? He's only a light bear, literally only a light bear, because he likes giving orders. Now, I mean, obviously he's a talented light bear, don't get me wrong, but keep that in mind. Kuhn could become a spear bearer if he wished. On top of all his fighting abilities, he's obviously got a big brain. Kuhn is a smart boy, an absolute expert strategist to the point where he's smarter than, than a lot of rankers. He can trick rankers like, Qu I mean, okay, so Quant's kind of a ditz, but even in a, in a billion other cases, you know, every arc, Kuhn has some big brain moment where he changes the game and it's amazing. So Kuhn combines his, his brain with his fighting abilities and it makes him pretty terrifying. Now getting into his lighthouse skills. So currently in the story, Kuhn can control at least six lighthouses, which is kind of nuts and he can use them to do a plethora of things. So obviously lighthouses are already used to gather information and whatnot and survey the field. Uh, and he's able to give orders from his lighthouses. So aside from just what lighthouses can normally do, he also can do lighthouse flow control, which is where you're essentially trying to block the movements of your opponent, which is pretty cool. He can also use lighthouse teleportation. He's used this a couple of times, once during his fight with Reflejo, where he ends up stabbing Hua Ryun with the white heavenly mirror, and Reflejo is caught off guard. Lighthouse teleportation, that's a very impressive skill. He also uses it later on during the hidden floor to run away from Kuhn Kaseya, and of course, when he escapes from uh, Jin Sung Ha, when they trap Jin Sung in that ship and send him uh, flying away. He can also create barriers with his lighthouses, so that's pretty cool. And there's a really interesting skill that he's used at least once, where he can power up a weapon using his lighthouses. It's called a Lighthouse Shinsu Manipulation Skill Weapon Boost, and the one that he used was Emerald Sword, and he actually powered up his knife using the lighthouses, which is pretty nuts. It's kind of like a support move, but he's able to use it on himself, which is pretty neat. Aside from being a hacker and all this other stuff, Kuhn has one huge lighthouse ability. This is probably his most known and his almost his signature move, and that is Ana Core. Now, Aina Core is a skill that Evan Edric taught Kuhn how to use. It took a lot of training. It took its own kit and everything. It's like a, I don't even think it's illegal, right? Aina Core is like this secret technique for light, light bearers. And I don't even know, not many light bearers know how to use this because it's kind of insane. And Evan taught it to Kuhn and using beta as a like a power source and, and as a stand-in because regulars like aren't allowed to use it, Kuhn is able to trap an opponent in this sphere of hexes and in the normal mode, 
Essentially, it traps uh, whoever's inside of it. When they try to escape, it like teleports them somewhere inside the sphere, and they're stuck. He's used it a couple of times, I know particularly during the uh, Floor of Death, I remember. But there's also a mode of Ana Core where you switch it to like red, and you can actually teleport them, like away which is pretty neat. Now what's really interesting about Kuhn is that he is skilled at doing body reinforcement, he's been training that during his climb, but he never really showed an aptitude for Shinsu, like creating bangs of Shinsu. In fact, when he got to the hidden floor and started training with Han Song, he was only able to create one bang. And Han Sung was like, really? You're from the Ten Great Families and that's all you can do? And it's sort of revealed that Kuhn was sort of denying his, his origins as a member of the Kuhn family. Uh, he, he didn't want to accept that part of himself, he didn't really want to use Shih Tzu, and that, that, even, even that could be explained as partially why he chose to be a light bearer, because most of the people in his family are spear bearers. He, he was denying that, you know? He didn't want anything to do with his family or his father. Um, but eventually, he ends up sort of giving in, and he finds his Shih Tzu quality, which is ice, particularly an ice spear. So obviously, spear bearing, there you go. But being able to create ice is actually very rare, particularly within the Kuhn family. Mostly it's electricity. So that was pretty cool. You know, that shows you that Kuhn is talented in his own little route in the Kuhn family. Um, and he's uh, he's really trained this ice spear. He's able to sort of use it in conjunction with his lighthouses. He uses it on Michael during season three, which is pretty cool. Uh, so he's able to use them in conjunction, freeze Michael, uh, and he actually is able to also use his ice powers in conjunction with Rack and his rock powers. And he's able to freeze that mirror on the hidden floor. They, they like block it and freeze it, stop its movements. It's pretty cool. So Kuhn is still training that ice. It's not like he's mastered it by any means. He's kind of just learned it, you know, but he's getting there, which is really cool. So Kuhn is able to use ice Shinsu in the form of an ice spear. Now Kuhn's most recent power and sort of an upgrade and probably his only real like giant upgrade that he's received, almost like a bomb upgrade, is the Yan family flame. So when Rachel tried to kill Kuhn and Kuhn was frozen for, for a few years and they left to go resurrect him or whatever, revive him, he wasn't dead, but they ended up going to Yan Woon, who gave them this, you know, the flame hammer, you guys know, and he got the flame, this flame fish thing, uh, the fire fish as I like to call it. So this Yan fish, this fire fish, is crazy. It's a huge upgrade for Kuhn. Now, this flame has been shown to deal some damage in some ways. It, it, I, I do believe he's used it offensively. Not too much. The main takeaway from this flame fish is that if someone is injured or near death, right, you can revive them. It's, it's pretty insane. Kuhn was attacked by Paul and he was barely hanging on, right? Barely alive, and this flame fish healed him. Now, if someone's dead, you can't heal them. You know, like with Dang Dang. He couldn't, he couldn't heal Dang Dang. Uh, Dang Dang died. There was nothing he could do. It's still insane. I can't believe that Dang Dang actually died. Pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, but with Burdich, for example, he was able to heal her. Now, also, with the flame fish, I don't know if this is like only for canine people. We have to see it more in action. A lot of this is new information. But Kuhn was also able to power her up and she was able to transform an additional level with the help of the flame fish. Now, I don't know if this means if he gives it to bomb, bombs all of a sudden really powered up. Probably, right? I, I feel like this flame probably powers you up in addition to healing you. So this flame fish is nuts. You know, Kuhn is able to control ice and fire. It's absolutely insane. We'll have to see more of what Kuhn is capable of as the series goes on, particularly with the fire fish. And lastly, just some thoughts on Kuhn's weapons. He loves using knives. He's used knives a lot. I actually had a conversation recently about this with the guys over at AOA. Uh, Kuhn, he's a knife guy, and you know, he, he could use something bulkier if he wanted, like a spear or a giant sword probably if he wanted to, but the thing about Kuhn is that he's a sneaky guy, he likes shank, you know, he's a shanker or whatever, um, he, he's a sneaky guy, he, he has them up his sleeves and whatnot, it makes a lot of sense, plus he's very talented with his knives, he's used them many times, and, and I remember he fought on par with Hots, and Hots was using a, a sword, Kuhn was using a knife, and he was fighting on par with him. So that's crazy. He used the Man Bar and Dina bag during season one, gave it away to Nerei. It was a very talented bag. He was able to clone items and hide people in there. It was like a pocket dimension, right? And it was pretty OP. He ended up trading it away. We're not really sure why, because it seemed like a very 
useful item. Maybe he didn't want it anymore. Maybe he didn't like that he took it from his dad. He was just like, I'm gonna do this on my own. We don't really know. Maybe he just wanted Narae's help that bad. Regardless, that was only season one. And then the White Heavenly Mirror. So he got this during the workshop battle. Pretty overpowered item. It's able to hide people inside of it. So if you stab them, it steals them away inside. Pretty awesome, you know? He, he used it during the Hell Train a lot and against White and everything, or Joaquin. And it also can do a couple of other things, but Kuhn has said that he doesn't really want to experiment with them because they're kind of dangerous. So it's pretty interesting, but those are just some of the weapons that Kuhn has used over time. He also has an armor inventory, of course, and all that stuff. He's used a suspendium pulley in season one. So there you go. He got that from Kuhn Edwan's uh, treasure as well. But that's basically it. Kuhn is a crazy fighter. He has so many powers, abilities, and strengths. He's a powerhouse. Do not underestimate Kuhn. Even though Bomb is the main character in this story, Kuhn is an absolute beast, and I really want to see him fight more, and I think we will as season 3 goes on, especially now that he has this firefish. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you enjoy talking about Tower of God, we actually have a Discord server linked down below. We have some Tower of God discussion channels, and it's a lot of fun, so I highly recommend you guys join. Also, we just talk about some other stuff and goof off there from time to time. We also have a Patreon, so if you want to directly support me and, and this channel, then I highly recommend going to check that out. There's a lot of cool perks on there as well, and you guys over on Patreon, you're the best. I really would not be able to do what I do, do what I do without you guys. Once again, thanks a lot. I'll see you in my next Tower of God discussion video. Take care.